you can't overcome frustration by behaving in frustration ways, in frustrating ways. You know, these months to me seem to be becoming more and more powerful. Each month yeah. seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And I'm making like more and more of these improvements. And I feel like each month is going to be better than the next. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Next Gen Traders YouTube channel. I'm Lance and I'm here with Sam T, Sam H, and Alex. And this is Saturday night on August 7, 2021. Today, we're going to get into a little bit of OTC and listed market action these past uh, few weeks. We didn't do an episode last week, but um, we're back with four of us today. So there's been quite a few changes since the last episode. We're going to go over some trades and some notes that we took over the past week. Then we're going to get into an open discussion and each do a quick recap of our July towards the end. And then Sam is going to close us out after that. So without further ado, Sam is going to start off with the listed market. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the last couple of weeks have been a very interesting market. Um, I would say the shorts are definitely in control right now. Um, as a short seller, I think we've we've got an edge. Longs are having a really hard time trying to you know squeeze water out of rocks. Um, and then we get some like random runners that go, but it's a hard time to try to get an entry on them. So it's just one of those markets where you know it seems like there's things that are moving, but it's just hard for either side to really fully capitalize on it. Um, but I think the shorts are definitely in control. Um, however, the on Friday and Thursday, there was, a, I think, a little bit of a power shift there. And uh, specifically on Friday, we had like five different stocks that were running like crazy. I mean, strength that, you know, we hadn't seen in at least, it's been like three, four weeks, I think, since I've seen that. And that was just kind of a testament to like, okay, it might be time, you know, after the, the Robin hood IPO, like, I feel that that kind of shook some things up, got some volume moving, kind of shifted this summer market we've got going on. So I'm expecting to kind of see some longs in control here, maybe the next week. Um, but as of, you know, previous weeks, the, the shorts have definitely been in control, you know, still nail and bail. Nobody really should be greedy right now. Um, you know, I was going to size up and kind of add some size, but I was talking with one of the moderators at MIC and he's like, you know, this isn't really a market for anybody to get too comfortable. You know, I think shorts have been so comfortable for a while that when shorts get really comfortable, that's when they're about to get screwed and longs are still in that kind of getting screwed zone. So everybody's just kind of in this in between. So it's really important that we all kind of take things slow, nail and bail and only go for those A plus. So yeah, it's kind of how the listed market's feeling for me right now. Awesome. I like that part that you said about being comfortable when we always have to keep adapting, adapting to whatever we see. We can never like be fully comfortable. Obviously we have our confidence in our setups and stuff, but we can't just like be stagnant and think that everything's the same. So I like yeah. that, Sam. Thank you. So Alex is going to go on to OTCs. Yeah. So for o OTCs, uh, past two weeks, they've been definitely slow, very slow. We still have some runners. Like I said, all, all, all we're saying, the summer market, we have like two, three in, like per week. I, I'm personally learning some like new, like not like new patterns, but like new types of playing them. So they, like there were some nice like setups, like breakouts, OTC breakouts on uh, paddocks. Like I think two episodes before we, we thought like that the patterns are, are going to come back, but mm -hmm. they just didn't. It was just one week. Uh, also, yeah, so patterns don't work. Fair green days overnight still don't work. So as all the summer, just doing only intraday trading, I'm still scared of some of the swings. <laughs> just trying to get, because all of the stocks, they just open week. They open very, very weak and then you have to react based on the opening. Usually like before, I always like to like see them strong in the morning. They have the morning morning spike, but now they just not. It's it's not like a padding, but they open like very weak. They dip, maybe to uh, green red, and then they they bounce back. So it's it's a little bit different. So I'm adapting to that. Still staying safe, trading like two three times per week. So yeah, hoping for some acceleration coming to the uh, fall trading. Yeah, that's um, that actually what you said there made me think about with the listed market. Um, we've had it where like pre-market and the listed market has been so dead. 
like there'll be like no action pre-market. And then it seems like within the first 15 minutes of like market open, like out of the blue, everything kind of starts happening, something plummets or something runs. So mm -hmm. a lot of uh, what a lot of traders are doing right now is they're waiting like 15 minutes after the market open to start trading because they want to allow kind of the trend to form before kind of going in blindly because pre-market usually, you know, we can really depend on pre-market to kind of give us the direction of what's about to happen. But with this current, you know, the volume and everything, we're really not getting, you know, very much insight from pre-market. So a lot of people are being more patient in, in the morning. Um, yeah. So that's, that's similar with lists as well. Um, I'm going to jump into uh, two trades that I took this week that I want to go over. Um, let me pull them up here. So this was my, my loss this week. Um, this was on, can you see my uh, Corso, my mouse? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this was on MVST. Um, and it's kind of hard to see my arrows right here, but you can see my entry was right here. And then my exit was right here. Um, essentially what this was, was this was kind of a hot chick during the day. The above VWAP uh, top formed. And then we had a death candle through VWAP with uh, elevated volume which gave that kind of confirmation as an entry. Um, and so what we do is, you know, we wait for, wait for the, the bounce essentially and go in scaling up towards VWAP. Um, so I got my entry on this, which I think this was a really good entry. It was according to my plan. I followed everything the way I should have. Um, but it was just one of those ones that decides that it's not over, decides that it wants to keep running and squeezing. And it's kind of a testament, like I was saying, um, a testament to what I was saying about how the market conditions, this was on Friday. So this was my, my last trade of the week. Um, everything was just kind of had a little bit more strength than we were used to. So we're having to kind of learn to adjust to that. Um, one note I, I, I want to say a reason that I think this could have been a loss is paying attention to the volume. So when you enter a position, you want to think who is in trouble? Are the longs trapped or are the shorts trapped? So what, when you are a short seller, you want something to happen on the chart, aka a death candle, that traps anybody who's long, right? They're instantly underwater. And so their fear and emotions are up. And so they're looking to sell, you know, at any pop, which is good because then it brings the price back down. And so when I was looking at this chart, um, the 12 line right here was really, really strong. And so I was like, okay, well, there's a lot of longs up here who are trapped. So once it drops below 12, then the longs will be underwater. But something that um, we didn't really take into account until afterwards is that if you look at the volume right here during that, there was not much volume that was traded. And so you need to take into account volume because it can look like, oh yeah, there's going to be, there's a lot of action above 12. But in reality, the volume was so low that there wasn't that much trading happening so there weren't that many traders or longs who were actually trapped when this move happened. So that's just something that was kind of a lesson that I took from this. The other thing, and I, I know this is uh, a little bit smaller. Let me try to zoom in on this. It's a little bit fuzzy, but this is uh, the intra-daily chart. So this is like four days here. I, this was kind of a steady uptrend. Obviously, it kind of broke down and, and was a little more shaky on this day but it was still like a steadier uptrend than I would usually want to trade. I want to trade something that's a little bit more broken down and doesn't have that much support. So I think those two um, you know, reasons mixed with kind of just the market conditions that we were having on Friday, I think is probably the reason that I got squeezed out on it. You know, if I had to, had to take a guess there, um, but don't take up too much time. So let me go to my next trade. This one was golden. I am obsessed with this trade. Um, obviously it's a little bit, let me see if I got a closer, I should have a closer view here. There we go. Okay. So this one was a really good trade for me, um, following the process on this. Uh, what I did here is I played the outer lines. So this is pre-market happening right here. So I had lines drawn at 650, which is about right here. Cause it's a whole dollar, half dollar, um, cu coupling with a 660 support. And then 680 and seven were my lines to scale. And so playing the outer lines, when you have a, a stock that's breaking down below VWAP and it can squeeze up to outer lines, that's a very good sign for a short seller because it's got so much resistance there that it's oftentimes going to reject it and come back down if it's already broken. So that was my entries on here was just playing those outer lines. 
And then on my exits, I just covered on any washes. You know, when you get a wash, when you get a big confirmation, you always want to lock in some size. So this first cover that I had here was 50% size. So I don't take my full position, but I do lock in gain. So this is a 50% size. And then on this, this was my adding to my winner. After you get a death candle like this, it's essentially like my MVST trade, really, where you get that death candle and then kind of that really small bounce back up towards VWAP. So I did that, added to my winner, added about uh, pretty close to 50% size back on, and then nail and bail, you just cover, lock in those gains. And then I covered here at a 610 support line, which turned out to be absolutely perfect. I was literally screaming. I was so excited. I was on call with uh, Xander at the time because as soon as I covered, this thing squeezes up and it, it ran up. I don't remember how high, but this wasn't even the top here. So that one was definitely a highlight of the week and one of my best trades in a little while. Um, but those are my two trades I want to go over. Don't want to take up too much time, but overall, I'm really happy with my trading. Um, I followed my plan. Um, I'm executing, you know, I'm not nervous. Like I have been before, you know, my problem has always been kind of fear of executing and not getting into positions. So whenever I execute my plan, if it's a loss, if it's a loss, but I'm happy with how I did this week. Yeah, definitely. Great job, Sam. Awesome bottom pick on there. And I like that part in the, when you were going over your first trade, when you said that you are looking for something to short that doesn't have as much support below, like for longs, we don't like to see like, too long a stock with a ton of overhead resistance and you don't want a short a stock with a bunch of underground support. Right. So like, it's just like, there's so much wiggle room and anything can happen there, but yeah, awesome yeah. job. Um, I'm only going to go over one trade this week. I'm going to go over a quick recap of how last week went. Um, last week I started off red Monday and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, I didn't make any trades and I was like, okay, something's got to change my win rate over the past a uh, few weeks is, was under 40%. And I was like, this is terrible, not doing this anymore. I need to change something up. I need to look for the confirmation over the anticipation. So on Thursday, I um, this was my trade on FLGC. So pre-market was pretty illiquid, huge morning spike out the gate. And then I saw this downtrend, which is exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for the stock to first base up and start making higher lows. So right here, I drew this line here. I wanted to get in right here, but um, as soon as I missed it, I was like, I'm not going to chase. So I waited for my next one of my lines to come in. I got in a little bit late right here at 1183-ish. And my plan was to hold and set my new risk on a new support level on the chart, which would have been right here. And I just completely broke my plan here. I, um, I have absolutely no reason to have gotten out right here. I traded this really, really badly. As soon as I sold, I was mad, not because of the upside that I could have made, but because I broke my plan. I don't care about the money. I care about trading well, and I did not trade this well at all. I got out for in a terrible spot, so I hated it the way that I got out, but um, I'm fixing every single day with my uh, strategy. Um, focusing more on following my lines, following my plan, not buying random reclaims through VWAP because making specific buys or sells based directly on VWAP is not that great of an idea for long-term profitability, um, as well as just buying random higher lows either. So that's what I was doing in the past few weeks. And I honestly deserved to have a super low win rate with the quality of trades that I was doing because I was taking a lot of them, but they weren't good. So I was doing um, qual quantity over quality and it's got to be the opposite quality over quantity. So, um, so Friday or Thursday and Friday were just small gains, um, like $2 and $1, whatever, whatever. I'm just focusing on my process, but um, that was my FLGC trade. Just got to focus better on um, following my plan and executing to the best of my ability. So uh, I'm going to come back here really quick. And then I just had a few notes. Um, so I was listening to a trading podcast this week from Beyond the PDT uh, that Bryce Tui and Matt Monaco did with Ricky Analog in uh, 2019. By the way, if for some reason in like five years, Bryce and Matt, you watch this video, bring Beyond the PDT back ASAP. We need <laughs> it. Okay. We all need it. And um, 
So he made this analogy about going into a trade without your set strategy. And I actually like really liked it. So he was like, sometimes when like you're in school, your teacher would want you to write everything on a piece of paper that you knew before you took a test. And like, it would make sense. It's like a brain dump. And then he went on to say, if you can't brain dump your strategy before you get in a trade completely on a piece of paper with everything that you're looking for and everything you're expecting, how are you supposed to execute it when real money becomes on the line? If you can't line out exactly what you're looking for, then how are you supposed to execute it? So I like that. And then one other one that he said was, if you're a general of an army and you know that you need strategy and you need the correct technicals in order to beat the other enemy army, you're not going to send your troops into war with no prep. They're just going to get demolished. They're all going to die and they're all going to get trampled over. Just like you're not going to go into a trade with no strategy. You're going to get you're going to get trampled over by the market. And the moment that you think that you've got you more, the moment you think you've got euphoria in the market is the next moment that it kicks your ass because it can at any time. So focusing on following your strategy and following your plan is way more important than a lot of people realize. And so many people need to focus less on making money and more on making good trades. And I think we'll see the number of 90% of traders losing slightly decrease over time. So um, that's all I got for me. I'm going to go, Alex is going to go on next. Actually, okay. Sam looks like he's got something. Yep, there it is. Well, and it's the cycle of investor emotions. Y'all can find this on Google, but the top here is euphoria. And that is the maximum risk because when people are operating out of that euphoria, that's when you are at like your weakest point and you're going to make your worst decision. So I, I, I was funny because I had it on the wall. I was like, oh, wait, he's talking about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Awesome. All right, Alex, what you got? Yeah. So I'll go over, over my trades from late July, like the, my last trade from July. So this was uh, HALV trade. Okay, now, you see a clock, 3.51 a.m. This man set six alarms in order to be at this episode. Dedication <laughs> right there. Hell yeah. So, okay. Sorry, Alex. Go so, ahead. Oh, yeah. I have the, the daily here. So, we see uh, it, it wasn't just the first windy. It was also a multi-day breakout potential because when I bought it, it wasn't multi-day breakout yet, I think. Oh, no. So, it, so we see it had the, the morning spike. So, as soon as it had the morning spike, I, I, I put it on my watch list because it's it's a former runner and we see it's a recent former runner so it's also an old former runner and a recent former runner from three days ago and they had the first green day i think that there was some setup that i missed on that day then we had three days of consolidation then the gap up and this morning spike so i didn't get it right away like on the morning spike because i i, I didn't want to chase and also one thing i want to say that so the last two months I think I changed my approach from training, from being a morning trader to more of an like a afternoon trader. Because before I always like, you know, my favorite setup is more morning panning Dubai. So I always looked at, like to, to trade the first like 50 minutes. But now since they're not working, I don't like, like getting on the breakouts in the morning. I like giving them time and then entering, like, you know, coming into the, power hour or like before power hour so after 1 p.m i look for the triggers like all like like here anticipating the high day break and then potentially multi-day break so same pattern as uh, on the first green days or multi-day breakouts so here i had actually two trades so we, we see the, the first one i traded before 1 p.m i think that was the only reason why it failed so here I entered at 44. My risk was, uh, I don't remember exactly, but it's like, I, th I think here, like 41, 42. And I exited be before the risk because I, when I entered, I realized that was before the, my like 1 p.m. time. So I exited right there and I still, like, I remember from March, I think, I traded HTZQ and I, I had an early entry, then I exited. And then I just for, forgot about the ticker and it's like 20% 20, 20 uh, in the afternoon. I think all you remember that. And in this one, I yep. said like, I'm, I'm not gonna miss this. So I put it on my watch list and I think I, I, I even put the price alert somewhere there, 43. And yeah. And then when after 1 p.m., even better be because it was coming into the 2 p.m., it had this nice trigger at 40, 40, 37. 
and then as soon as it broke with volume i entered there and i didn't care about my like i didn't care about my entry to be the perfect one but that, that was now that, that was an issue of mine when i always wanted to have the best entry ever but then that caused me to miss a lot of trades like because as soon as it spikes i'm like i, I don't want to chase even though you see like even if i chased 44 three it was like a one percent change chase like two percent chase so it's not even a chase with the the risk reward still is solid too so my risk was on 43 then right away we, we got the spike then we see this a little candle and then another spike and then uh so this and this minutes were, were, were tough but i remember during that minutes i was saying like i've seen this press action a lot of times i'm sure it's gonna have the next push and then um this one it'll be surely the one that i'm gonna share sell into yeah. so i waited for like you see one two three four five six seven like six seven minutes then, then we had the push and i sold immediately there i didn't care how like how much it's gonna go out because i was already up i think 11 percent. yeah yeah 11 percent. so i just sold right there that was a one to four risk, risk reward Damn. yeah if you can yeah so that was the super sold trades. Uh, and that was my last trade of July, but I still ended it red, fortunately. But uh, also I, I wanna say that I opened a new account with Schwab and I added uh, 1500 there. So now my overall account, so I have 1500 in each, each trade and 1500 in Schwab. So I have 3000 and their commissions are free. I've heard people saying their executions are bad, but now I like, because some people suggested me that because they saw my monthly recaps that I, that I by, by the way, posted in my profitly. And all the months, like April, May, June, July, they were all red, but that was all just because of the commissions. Yeah. So if I did not have, so yep. let me show you one thing. I made $675 and I paid, look at this amount. So, so that, that's why I, I want to, try Schwab because they don't have commissions and if it actually works then I'll be golden because I just need one good trade they're just, just gonna cover three losing trades so okay that was my last trade of July Q, Y, and C trade so just a panic Dubai I traded right here that was very quickly that was a break even but you know because of the commission that was a loss but I don't count it as a loss I count it just as break even and I think one of the reasons why it failed is because Tim Sykes, he bought it right at the top. The Sykes effect. <laughs> he bought it somewhere there and it started panicking right away. So he was just dumping into the panic. Yeah, so the, the turn, that was, it was very clean. Like 25 turn was very, very clean. I entered at 25.05. Then I just saw that weakness. Like it wasn't just going up. So I just sold right there into the weakness. Um, yeah, so that wasn't even like, that was a half trade. Half trade. I, I think this is the best trade since February, maybe. So uh, a few weeks ago, I joined new chat and they're all like, the only way they're trading, you're trading this sub pennies, like only OTCs. And I've never been comfortable with them because like, you see the, the price action, it's not as clean as on like, like, uh, one zero point one stocks, you know, because here's zero point zero zero five. So I also never traded because the commissions were high on them because you pay the five five and, and, and then you also pay another five dollars, I think, yeah, for the, the shares. Yeah. But I just didn't care about the commissions, as I always say. So as we see, the overall setup was very clean. You see the daily, you had the three day move, then four days of consolidation. I missed. 15 of them. I saved all the charts. I printed all of them. I have them in my binder. And this one, just you see the 15 minute, the 15 minute chart, it was so clean. So That's textbook. That's so textbook. Mm -hmm. So we see the multi today breakout level was 49. I so initially the perfect entry was right here at 44, 45, when it had the, the view up reclaim. But I think uh yeah, I missed that one. I I don't remember if I was at home, but I missed that one. Then the second entry was here on the high day break, risking 46. 
this one I just uh, I personally don't like buying right to the breakout level. I I like either buying it before the breakout or on the dip. So we had this spike, and I someone I remember telling someone that it's gonna go without me, but I still didn't chase. I, then somewhere here I put my limit on five, and uh, I think I I posted uh, my win analysis in minimum profitly. And this entry was a huge like emotional change because that time I was de debating whether to click that buy or not. And then I just remembered uh, uh, Mark Douglas, when he said, you don't care what was gonna happen. You, you, you care what, you should care what happens right now. Like what are the yeah. indicators? And I just, as soon as I remember that, I just clicked buy. Then I think I waited five minutes then it had this little dip and I got executed. Then right away we had this nice, I mean, you see it's, it's not as clean, but I was just, I was very patient with that. And then I sold with, with the, into the next high day push when it didn't spike big enough here, it was weak. So I sold at 58, that was 16% gain. Uh, yeah, and then you see how it closed. The next day it had morning panic. So. And I'm telling you, for being this, I'm, I mean, swings are just very tough. <laughs> Dude, your patience on this trade and your last trade are beautiful. Or the, the first yeah. trade you us in this trade, like where you're just waiting and just, you know, letting the chart form and just waiting for those, those exits. It's really yeah. awesome. That's exactly what I've always like, wanted to achieve because I watched trading tickers a lot of times. And Britani, like the patience he has, that's like another level. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> that's another level. So, oh, it's I, another level. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think I want to be that patient, but you know, somewhere in the middle, the golden middle. So, I'm gonna <laughs> be there. Yeah, great job, Alex. And uh, both of or this one right here, um, that's the exact part of the new kind of strategy we we yeah, used to yeah. talk about was the resistance becoming support. And that's, that's it right there. And you capitalized on it perfectly. And like, like Sam said, your patience through that, it's, it's just getting so much better through these high day pushes. And as they become more frequent, I can't wait to see how your trading elevates when they become more yeah. frequent. So, wow. yeah. So this was like a one sold play last week and I nailed that. The other ones weren't that perfect. So this was my last trade. It was on uh, Thursday and like, I wasn't watching this in the morning. Then uh, Garrick, he told me about this. He, he was like, can, can you trade SNAV? Because he, because since he lives in like other country, his, his broker didn't allow to trade that. And he said like the, I don't know why, he said like the overall pattern was A plus because like, see, I mean, even though this, this candle was red at that time, it was green. It was like, you see like a, about 12. And we had this first big move, consult, like as usual, consolidation. And then this was a potential breakout. And as you can see, I entered midday, even though I always try to enter after 1 p.m. But since this was like too, too perfect, I waited for the perk. I didn't want to just buy it before the perk. And I entered at 0.1229. Yeah, I entered it and my risk was uh, 118. And as you can see, two hours. I was waiting two hours because the setter was there. You just have to buy because the risk reward here was very great because I was, I was risking four, like for four points, like, I don't know how to say that, like, uh, like 2%, I think two or 3%, but the goal was to break high day and then see this, this, this candle it was at 15. So if it, if it didn't have this drop into the, the close, you would have probably, I would say broke this high, and then had the big move today breakout. Yeah. So the risk reward was very solid here. I, I would say at least four to one. So I was just sticking to all my risk here. It was looking very great. It was at 12.5. Everything was great. But then suddenly we had just, just, we just started to dump. I don't know what happened. All the stupid promoters started selling their stock. They're right gone. So right yeah. here, right here, it just dropped right here. And then it held itself. I was like, okay, maybe the promoters can dump it and help. But then we had this, you know, the rollover thing. And then 
I had my risk at 118 and it bounced right at 118. So you can say like, why well, you cut there if you didn't break your risk, but like all the tape was super red, everything was red. And then the next bidder after 118 was 116, I think. Mm. So I didn't wanna like just, you know, just say, okay, it's gonna bounce there because it's the support. So I sold immediately right there. And I'll say it was a good, good sell because I stuck to my risk. Like I, I personally, like, I don't, I don't just like selling right when it's spiked. Like if I sold somewhere here, I don't think I, I would be happy because like, what's the, what's the point of selling here? Because my, my goal is the high day. Maybe if I was like scaling in and out, then I would understand. So anyways, after this, it had this bounce and I thought, thought it's just gonna, it was just like shake it out the weekend, weekends as me, one of them. But then we just had another dump bounce and then just waterfall. So waterfall. So I don't know what happened. I've heard people say that this sticker just has that tendency to, to do that before the breakout. Like when it breaks out, then it's acts, acts nice. So, well, I don't have that experience yet. So I'm pretty happy with how I executed this trade. My my entry wasn't the perfect, but I don't care about the perfect entry. I more I care more more about the exit. Like this, this is my 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 Definitely. Mm -hmm. So it. that was just a three percent loss. Not nothing. I say said like when I had that that um, that win on TXPM. Now if there was no commissions, it would have just covered everything, and I would be still up uh, a lot. But yeah, and that was like a thirty dollar loss with commissions. Well, I just don't care because the setup was there. I executed great. it great. It has had, it has high odds, just didn't play out. So, yeah. No, your discipline, your discipline on that trade is like perfect because, because all, you know, all the guys that were holding and hoping this thing, they just had to hold that late day pump. And now like they're bad. Mm -hmm. you know, they're mm -hmm. looking at big losses and you, and you cut losses yeah, exactly. where you wanted to. Got out for, for a small loss and, yeah. And the 90% are just underwater. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. patience too, Alex. Yeah, because I've seen a, a lot of the same uh, stocks that they just, they, they just have this weak midday because I didn't have an expectation that would break high day right here, like right here. I didn't have the expectation. I was ready to hold through all this. And then instead of having this action, I wouldn't have this action, you know, going to the high day and then potentially maybe even swing, but I don't like, uh, I don't know about swinging, but my overall picture was there. I wanted to play the big picture move. So it just didn't play out. So so that were all my trades from last week and this week. Uh, all right. So yeah, that was uh, all I wanted to say. Well, dude, Alex, something I was going to say is like the, the thing that you and Lance both touched on a lot is where you are following your process, not focusing on the P&L, you know? And so it's like for you, you're, you're following your process and you're executing so much better than you have before. And just because, you know, we're, we're trading with small size and all those types of things. So commissions, you know, eat us alive, but you know, and one year, two years, five years down the line, that won't matter as much. And so what's super important is that we're following our process and executing that and not, you know, getting emotional over the, the P and L right now. Well, yeah, and to add to what so you're bad. saying, like, like Lance, he on FLGC, like he had a frustrating trade, but he's still just understanding it plus or minus, you know, five bucks. It doesn't matter. You're just, you're learning your process and improving on your trades, no matter the outcome and learning from every single step. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't care how much I made. I mean, I made $7 and 58 cents on it. I really don't care, but I traded it like crap. So that's what I care about. I don't care if I made 50 bucks on it. If I traded it badly, I do not care like at all. So that's like, it's super important to focus on your trading, not the money, like Sam and Sam said together. So. I want to add that uh, on my TXTM trade. So you, you see how I said that was 16% gain, but I didn't say the amount because it doesn't matter because that just depends on their position size. Yeah. Right. So yep. I remember during that trade. So when I got it on five, and it's back to like five five i remember t telling myself like like I, I literally said that like 10 10 times in my mind i said like i don't freaking care about the money all i care is the this is the setup yeah like i said like 
like you know i was like commentating on every like level to move and i was saying like so here's the like the, the move here's the the dip you don't care about the money you just care about the chart and yeah that's the only thing that matters for me that's yeah like, awesome no damn commissions coming into place either i don't care i don't care about commissions i don't care about the yeah. money i'm following that chart baby let's go yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it work, works out because a lot of people are saying that it was a game changer for them, like Schwab account. So I hope it works. And, and also it's going to allow me to scale in, in and out. That would be awesome. That awesome. would be really Yeah, scaling in and out. I didn't even think about that with no commission. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Love it. All right, Sam, what do you got? All right, I'm going to share my screen here if this works. And go get your charger. <laughs> <laughs> I will, maybe. Well, uh, no, no, maybe. We're not going to stop bugging you to go get your freaking charger, man. Okay. Everybody comment below, even whoever watches this, even <laughs> when the video is over, comment, Sam, go get your charger. So that way he never forgets <laughs> for the next episode. He'll have a charger with him. Okay, go ahead. All right, can you can all see this? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Okay, so this was ATRX um, from last week. Basically made 30% in like two minutes. This one was, was pretty fun. Uh, so this is a chart. I, it had news pre-market, OTC, former runner. I mean, this was like my top watch going in market open. Immediately, like market opens, bidders just slam the ask. And um, so I jumped into it at like 0.145. Um, I forgot how many shares. So 8,500 shares, 0.1425, and I I really do not like this sell. I mean, obviously hindsight's gonna be 2020, <laughs> but this was just like just buying. That's all that is is just buying all the way up. You have a you have a dip, you know, that's to be expected. But this one, this could have been like a three thousand dollar trade, and I'm not trying to think about the money. You know, <laughs> like 359 dollars. That's nice, but but trading wise, I traded this pretty bad. I got a decent entry, but like I just find like these setups, um, like I've failed on, on so many different trades and different patterns. And I just went back to the basics, like an OTC stop with news. People are gonna buy that. And if they don't, like I just lost as quick. This fails at 15, I'm at at 14, I lose half a penny. And then and then it whenever it spikes, you know, I sold it at uh 89 so making like over three pennies that that's solid risk reward lose half a penny to make over three pennies um no yeah it's, it's almost like there was news pre-market and me and alex never knew hmm. <laughs> I, okay if i knew he was gonna spike this much i would have told like everyone i know to buy oh okay. yeah well if you knew that's a different story you never know so yeah sorry yeah, sam I mean, we're not I gonna mean, pick on you but yeah <laughs> obviously i wish i would have sold it in the 40s that would have been great okay but oh, but anyway uh this was that. this was one of my favorite trades i made a, a, a good amount of money for my account size on it dude i'm so sure you like saw that. the level two stacking and you were like oh let's do this <laughs> no it's fun like well, another thing is like I don't like my my exit because it was too soon and everything, but I made thirty percent of my money in like two minutes, and I didn't know how to turn that down because like selling to strength and everything, and I was like, well, it could go more, but but whenever I get thirty percent and in two minutes, I'm probably gonna take that every time. Yeah, you lock that in because like you said earlier, it's all hindsight. Like you can say, oh, I should have held or I could have hold this, but as long as you're playing the chart, you're following your process and you, you need to have those profit goals before you go into the trade. And once your trade hits yeah. that profit goal, you lock in, you know, and when people try to get greedy and they try to turn a, a trade into one of those home runs, that's when they oftentimes will turn a winner into a loser. So it's never, you know, a bad idea to lock in gains on a, on a spike and, and selling into strength. Yeah. And then like in this summer market, I'm not going to expect a runner to go 300%. I'm going to be playing a little bit more safe and being a little bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to kind of skip into a little July recap here. Um, uh, can I add to this trade? 
yeah, yep, yeah, go ahead. So I want to say like that's just my my opinion. I think this kind of pattern, this is not like it's not like very consistent because you you never know what stock is gonna spike and what stock is just gonna dump. So I personally like I, I don't play this morning panics, but I see because you need the news and all that stuff. Like my, my question is if it started to spike and then it had the first weakness, would you have sold or held? Like if see that spike and had weakness? Yeah, like, like see that uh, the uh, after four four green days, uh, four green candles, yeah, the, the red one. Yeah, I mean, obviously you would have sold it because that was like 100% gain, but if it was like 20% gain, would you have sold it into the red? If candle? it would have spiked up, and say, like, I didn't try to sell here, I didn't get executed, and it fell back, I immediately would have sold for, for 15, 20%. Yeah, I was yeah. not gonna hold and hope on this thing. Okay, that's good. Good, too sketchy. Yeah, like, it's a little sketchy. These are my stats so far on, um, on breaking news plays and like morning spikes. So, I, I'm gonna keep on playing them and see how they go. No, yeah, and you're, you're tracking them and they're working for you. So just keep up with what's working for you. And were you going to go over the July, the July table that you had there? Yep, yep. Um, so July was good to me. I made – I mean, it was also bad to me. Like, you look at my 1%, that's not good at all, 37%. Um, I'm not proud of that. Uh, these first, like, two weeks in July, I was over-trading – and that's not good at all, obviously. Um, but what I really like is my average percent gain being like almost like five times the amount of my average percent loss. I was cutting losses really quick and letting my winners run. Um, I was happy about that. Super and important. After, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like I've been trading. I can't. Uh, basically, July marked one year, one month into trading. I started June 2020, and uh, in July, I, like, officially became a profitable trader. I was down almost like $100 at one point. In July, I came back, and and since then, I've been in the green. I've had, you know, my last four weeks have been, have been green weeks. So I'm seeing a little bit of consistency. We'll see how it holds up. Uh, but But now I'm... I can consider myself a profitable day trader, which which I'm proud of that. But uh, it's it's not by a whole whole lot. It's a couple hundred bucks. So we'll, we'll see where it takes me. No, yeah, great job. Keep that consistency up, Sam. Sam, awesome. Look at that last week of July. That's good. Sam, is that is that in included with commissions, right? Like everything. This is all including commissions. Without commissions, in July. I know, I, I know, I know. Like, well, so see like what I personal. What I personally do, like, see, like, on the, like, when, when you have the, the, the days, like, there's, like, one, two, three, four, the days, I put them, I put there my nominal profit, like, the actual profit, like, without commissions. But then when it says borrow fees, I count their commissions. Because you, you need to see, like, your, like, you don't care about the commission, so you have to see your actual p &L. not actual, and the nominal p per, per week. I just personally yeah. what I do. So, so you know yeah. how, no, how, I looked at how much you paid. You know, that, that was interesting. I looked at E-Trade, and in the past, like, 30-something days, I've paid over $400 in commissions. Uh, I remember I remember me saying someone, I said, like, I'm feeding E-Trade. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'm a little trader. I, I, I paid them $800. <laughs> so imagine how, how, how much, like, all the big traders paid them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, but that sums it up with me. Um, and now I'm going on a mission to get a charger. Go get it. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to go into uh, my plans, just kind of go over how July went for me and then what I'm looking for towards the future. Um, so July was a really good month for me. And, you know, my P&L was, it was one of my best. Obviously, it's, it's small. But what I was really, really proud of is my charts, my entries and exits are almost perfect. I had like maybe one trade the entire month that I was just being stupid. But before I entered the trade, I said, I'm using small size because I'm being stupid. So I, I knew what I was doing. 
But all my trades, when I look at my charts, and I'm, you know, I, I save them all in a folder. I'm going through, I'm like, wow, these are really good. And, you know, that's not just to say they're, they're all winners. Obviously, I took losses, but the losses were perfectly executed as well. So I was really proud of how I did in July. Um, and I, I really want to keep doing that, sticking with my process. Um, something that has been really important for me is oftentimes when I am, you know, doing something that I'm finding success in and then the market changes, I will oftentimes kind of be like, oh, maybe I should, you know, try a different pattern or maybe I should look for a different strategy to adjust for the market conditions or like things like that. And it usually kind of throws me off my groove. So what I've done a really good job at is I know what I'm looking for and I'm not adjusting that. I will, I will be patient. I'll wait for the market to come to me because I know that I have high odds when I'm executing the process that I've learned. So I've done really good with that. Um, something that um, I plan to be doing going into the future, I've talked to you boys about it, but for all you watching is I'm going to do, I'm calling it the $500 challenge. So essentially what I'm doing is for a long time, I've needed to size up you know, I've needed to kind of take that next step because, you know, with July, my, my trades were really good. So, you know, sometimes you got to step out, you got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to take, you know, that leap of faith and, and trust yourself really. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting, you know, it, it's all small numbers, but it's important to me. I'm going to be putting $500 extra into my broker account. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be upping my risk to a hundred dollars um, per trade. And I'm going to do this until I lose that $500 or if I don't lose it. Right. So what I'm going to allow myself to do is I'm sizing up and I've already accepted a possible risk of that sizing up, but I want to do it so that I allow myself to grow. Um, I was going to do it just like starting next week and just do it. But with the current market conditions, like I went over at, at the beginning of this episode, I'm really waiting for kind of the market to tell me that it's time to size up um, kind of when I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm in touch with the charts again. I understand the price action because, you know, we're just getting some of that summer volume right now. So that's kind of, you know, that's how my July went really happy with it. And, you know, going into August, um, I am looking to start to size up once the market kind of confirms that I can. So the future is sizing up and then just being patient, sticking with the process that has, you know, done really well for me June and July. So yeah, that's kind of my recap and my future look. No, I yeah. like that. Like, like Sorry, if you can ahead. afford, if you can afford that $500 to, you know, if you could lose it and you'll yeah. be okay. I think it's like, that's an all right experiment for me. I, in, in my situation, I don't have just $500 to, to throw in the market. Yeah. And, um, and honestly, Sam, I don't think you're going to lose it in my opinion, but I mean, we'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like for me, I had a two, like a $2,000 account and I was risking a hundred bucks on a trade or 200 bucks on a trade. And that was wild. And I don't know how I didn't blow up. Um, and you know, in my first three, four months of trading. And then once I got down 500 bucks, I kind of, you know, realized, duh, maybe I shouldn't be doing risking 10 points in my account. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. now I risk like one, yeah. like I went from $20 risk and now, you know, I'm about to go to, to $30 risk and then just keep on moving up. And I think that they'll keep my account safe and still slowly sizing up over time. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. The baby steps, especially Sam, uh, I like that part that you were talking about with um, when you said, if something doesn't work out, you're thinking about changing your strategy to try to adjust to what the market shows you. And Xander said that he, you obviously, you know, because you're on call with him every single day, but he said he was having the same problem where he was like, Oh, this didn't work. I took a loss on this. Should I adjust this? Should I adjust this? Am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this wrong? And that's where perfection comes into the thing. Like nothing's ever going to be perfect. You guys have your strategy and everyone like has their strategy and just, you got to follow it and that's it. And I definitely do this $500 challenge thing. Like Sam said, you're not going to lose it. You're, you're disciplined and <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome job. So Alex, do you want to go over your July 1st or. Mm -hmm. Let's go quickly. All right. So, I'll go after you. Yeah. Like the two main lessons that I learned. The first one I need to keep all the research on my watch list and as we can see my first trade of the june of the august was because i kept that uh, that, that, that ticker from the morning 
And then the second lesson is frustration. Uh, I, I had, uh, let me see, I had one nice quote. I said, you can't overcome frustration by behaving in frustration ways, in frustrating ways. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was from uh, the Daily Trading Coach. And there was one, one example, uh, one, like, one trader, like I don't know who, like he had very bad morning. Like he, he lost like a, a few thousand, I don't know. And then he was so frustrating that then he came to the afternoon in the same mood and then he just blew up. But if he just like, you know, if just took the midday to just re re reflect over everything just happened, just calm himself, just realize what you did wrong, then he, he would have profited in the afternoon. So that's the, that's the main thing. Uh, also, frustration for me it causes because I miss a lot of, a lot of trades because of the hesitation, as we see. All. So that first trade that I made in August, just like, you know, just all the lessons that I learned in July just went into that trade. And that, that's why I was very happy about that trade because I was able to like control myself. And when I saw all the indicators, I just entered there. But that, that wasn't in July. I missed a lot of trades in July. And I analyzed every, every one of those trades. So I was very happy to, to trade that. Uh, also, as I was also already said, I changed my trading style a little bit to like more afternoon trader. And yeah, I have a new, a new account. So that's all. And uh, also yeah, coming in, into the August, all, all, already a weekend, I'm, I'm still not, not expecting any, any big moves. But the one goal, like a little goal that I set to myself, I said that I want to have a green month, but of course I don't care. But this is just like a good thing to have. And especially if I don't have the commissions. So yeah. I, like, as, as we all know, September isn't going to be like hotter, as we all know, because August, September, maybe even November are the slower, slowest months. No, I, I think now November is it's when it's getting a little hot. So yeah, November it's, starts to get a little bit more. Yeah. September. Mm -hmm. So yeah. No, I don't have any big expectations for the month. I'm just like, I better have, like my personality is better have one good trade than like five little trades. Yes. So like, it's, it's better to have like one 20% gain than four or 5% gain. I don't know, they're just my personality. Yeah. So yeah, that's my goal for August. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna go over my July really quick. July was, um such a key month for me in terms of like my long-term process, my long-term journey. It was my first month of making actual consistent trades. So I was happy about that. The total month of June, I made only five trades and they were all like super all over the place. But July was my first month making consistent trades. Um, I'll share my screen of my, uh, let's see. I'll share my screen here. So this was for July. Um, this was my little PL chart right here. Um, super small size and just figuring out what I like and what I don't like. I, um, this month, I, I ended it green, but I don't care. Um, I focused on what strategies I liked and what I didn't. I tried several different setups, found what I, did, what I liked and what I didn't. I tracked them and found the win rate on them. And then now I am adjusting to, um, let's see, okay, Sam, okay. Um, anyways, um, I'm adjusting to my strategies. Um, I'm finding what I like and what I don't. And um, now this week, um, since I have sort of adjusted a few things, I'm feeling more confident than ever just to keep following my process. And um, so, yeah, that is uh, all I had for July. Super uh, great month in terms of my process and long-term goals at, uh, in August, just looking to get better every single day and uh, make the best trades I possibly can. Nothing out of the ordinary. So that, that's all I really got. Damn, that's awesome. Man. So uh, I didn't share my spreadsheet, but like on my Profitly, every month I do a monthly re recap and I go like deeply into my, all my like lessons, everything I learned. So I'm... I'll, I'll, I'll gonna link it down in the description for you to, ch to check it out. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sam, link your daily recaps down there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm doing a uh, daily recaps when I can. And so far, I mean, dude, when I'll go back and re over, go over and rewatch my daily recaps, 
and kind of get back in that headspace either after a loss or after a win. And really like it, it, those lessons that I learned, it just seals them in stone so much more. So I'm going back over my daily recaps and I'm watching them and like, shit, I'm learning more yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all. Awesome. My, daily, my daily recaps on Twitter, link down below. Yeah, Sam's Twitter. I'm going to start doing them Everyone's soon in the next month or so. So follow all of us, all of us on Twitter. Our links will be below. I want to add to Sam's uh, recaps. Like, I, I remember one of the videos I watched, and even though our strategies are completely opposite, I remember you were saying about the hesitation. It was, it was right at that moment when I was like, struggling, strugg struggling with that. So that, that one very, like, hit me. <laughs> So That's yeah, those those re re recaps are really good. Yeah, it's like I, like, awesome. like I remember you also used to do like some of, some of them like back in uh, April. I remember like maybe March. Yeah, I, like some of them. Yeah, yeah, I did a couple like whack with my OG. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and now it's like a completely different person. <laughs> Dude, I I should go back and rewatch my OTC ones because that would be completely <laughs> different. I'm yeah, yeah. That after this episode, but. Damn, I mean, all of us guys, I mean, listen to you guys go over your months and your plans for the future. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that we are all growing and improving at such an ex, like just a crazy rate. Like, you know, um, Alex, with your executions, your patience, your charts are improving so much. You know, Lance, with your mindset, your ability, you know, going over, taking those trades, not having that hesitation, you know, building that consistency. It's amazing. I mean, Sam, with your, you know, getting those high R and R, like your risk and reward is becoming great. And you know, you're just stepping it up each month. So I am incredibly proud of all of us. And I think July was a big month. And it's kind of, you know, these months to me seem to be becoming more and more powerful. Each month mm -hmm. seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And I'm making like more and more of these improvements. And I feel like each month is going to be better than the next, you know? And I really think that's going to be all of our future when we don't slow down, we don't stop and we just keep going, you know? So I'm really proud of all of us. Um, yeah. If you guys, you know, I know a lot of you guys are listening to us. If, if, if this helped you or you related to this, I mean, we love to hear that, you know, we want to, to talk with you guys. We do this for ourselves. But we also do this to be able to communicate with other traders and to be able to you know, relay with other people as well. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If so, leave a like and a comment. Um, I am so excited for August and the episodes that we've got coming. Um, I'm, you know, I want to do a shout out to Alex and Lance because y'all's consistency with these episodes have been amazing. You know, Lance calling us all in and making the plans and Alex, you know, showing up and helping with that. Like a lot of us, we have busy schedules and we're not mm -hmm. all able to meet, you know, make it each week but you guys are, are holding it together and i want to give a big shout out to you guys for that but oh yeah okay. thank you sam thank you so, um, yeah i'm super proud of all of us sam i gotta talk about you for a second you're about to do this new 500 dollars challenge thing you're finding a ton of consistency love seeing you at, like every single day in our discord being like yes nailed this stock we're like yes yeah, <laughs> sam from where you were to where you are now and now you're nailing these you're finding consistency like you said super proud of every single one of us and although Josh and James and Xander are not here, um, we're, we're, like you said, we're all growing to exponential levels and every single month is feeling more powerful than the, than the one before it. And um, we're not focused on the money that'll come in the future. We're focusing on, on our process and we're all growing in our process. So that's what's important. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. It was awesome. Yeah. 100%. 100%. One day, hopefully we have like everyone on this one of one of the episodes. Hopefully. Yeah, our goal is to get everybody on, on one big episode, but haven't done it yet, but we have to for sure. All right, y'all. Well, we're calling a night again. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of this. And I, for one, am really excited for next week and we'll be able to recap. But y'all stay safe, follow your process, follow your rules, don't be greedy, lock in those gains, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Awesome. Peace out. Cheers, guys. Bye. Yeah. Hey, yo, I did uh, this is off topic because we're cutting this, but um, for the first time I was in a position with a, a hard stop and a, like a cover. And I, I was, I had to piss so freaking bad.
And I'm like, for the first time, I'm going to leave my computer while I'm in an open position. And oh. I booked it for the bathroom. And I was like, I'm out. Alex, you know the HALB train? Oh, no. You were in, you were in the bathroom? Yeah. Like, oh. it was going so slow. I just went oh. and took a dump. Like, I was not going to watch that. I would have sold wait, too wait. soon, bro. Wait, wait, but you, you, wait you, you didn't take your, like, laptop? No. Come on. You got to take Whoa. the laptop in there. Hey, you gotta no, take a dump and like I, I also was just using it as an excuse to not sell too soon. <laughs> mm. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's let's get back to the episode.